So I do believe we are now live. Good morning, everyone, um, and anyone who's coming in to see the workout and join me in the workout. I'm just going to make sure everything's absolutely level because I am not sure it is. Um, you might wonder why I do do this continuously, but it feels like the minute you press a button, it changes. And just as I hate seeing your bodies not level, I hate seeing screens not level. So it's Tuesday morning. It's a lovely Tuesday morning. It's beautifully bright. And I'll make sure you can see me while I wait. In relationship to this workout, um, I want us to do the weights. <laughs> I've changed everything around. So hi, Susan. Good morning to you. So Susan was here yesterday morning. And she was in Zoom yesterday, and she's doing a one-to-one -to -one today, plus this warm-up. Um, lovely to see you, Susan. The workout, if you've got your um, weights, or if you haven't got weights, get the equivalent thereof, because we're going to be using weights today, or bottles of sand, or bottles of water. Bottles just like this one, um, because at least you could have a drink halfway through, <laughs> okay? Um, whichever way, even if the workout, um, if you don't have... Um, any weights at all, this workout will still be of use. The actual workout today, I've decided, because of some questions I'm being asked, uh, and rightly so, is going to give you a whole lot more of a technical edge on just what you're trying to do in relationship to the pelvis and the rib cage. So I'll slow the whole thing down, good morning Ken, and make it so that you have a bit of a body check um, that we're not constantly careering off into all sorts of other stuff. Um, in relationship to other bits of feedback, apparently I'm so quick and fast these days that it's actually hard to know, um, to keep up. And Tom, Tom said he'd spent um, three different occasions trying to actually do the workout, had to break it up because it was too intense. I didn't appreciate it was all that intense, but there you go. I suppose I'm doing this all day, every day, it feels like. Um, and I do lose check, I think, on what is reality. So with five people in the room, let me know who's in here. Um, if you can have weights ready or bottles of water um, or tins, cans, whichever way you want it, um, the weights are there to add something to the upper body. And once we've got that kind of thing added, I'll be making sure that your um, technique for the shoulder, because the problem with weights is it's all about the shoulders. If you get the weighted um, workout right, the right positions of the shoulder, you get a load of oblique. So it has a huge benefit. Good morning, Justine. So the benefit of the shoulders, and Sarah, hello there again. The benefit of getting your shoulder placement accurate um, means that you get a bigger workout on the obliques. Good morning, Anne. So obliques, um, shoulder stabilizers, and everything that makes up the trunk stabilizing system. If you get the weights wrong, you actually end up pinching and destroying something about the alignment that I don't want to happen. So we're in here and we're waiting to get a workout. Hello there, Carol. Good to see you again. If you've got weights, I'm saying grab your weights. Um, I'm also describing it as a much more technical, just check the time. It's much more of a technically biased workout. Um, the previous workouts we've done have been very much in relationship to... Um, getting stamina, endurance, and an assumption that you're um, doing what's right. Good morning, Deb, you're here too. And Donna, um, Deb, welcome back, glad you could join us. It is a workout that everyone should be able to do. All I can um, request is, I am using weights. The weights aren't there to make you feel as though you're in the gym. They're there to add um, an influence to the upper body stabilizers, particularly the upper back, the back of the arm, and some of the bicep, but the biceps are quite easy to activate. It's more that you end up activating everything across the upper back in towards your shoulder blade um, and in the back of the upper arm. If when using the weights you get more trunk connect, then you're winning, okay? So you need the trunk connection with the weights rather than just, oh, my arms are working really hard. So let's get this show on the road. Um, I need to approach the screens again. So we're going to start lying down. If you want to get a block front of your head, do so, because a lot of the work we're doing will be curling and uncurling. It really is Pilates with handheld weights. I'm going to come back to the screen, make sure I actually turn on another camera 
um, just in case anything happens to our transmission moment, she says as she puts her hand in front. There we go. Are we ready? So we lie down, sit your bottom down, and if you need a puff around your head, do so. Uh, I've obviously got a little blue one because um, they're at the studio. And then take your weights in your hands. In lying on your back, take your arms up to the ceiling. Have a quick look up and make sure that your knee joints are level. So compared with a lot of the stuff we've been doing this week um, and in the 30 odd videos, this is video 31. This will feel a little bit more thoughtful, but will build up in the intensity. Your shoulders are away from the neck, the navel's drawn to the spine. You're lying in your neutral pelvic position. On the next breath out, just pull your shoulder blades away from each other, letting the weights go towards the ceiling, but not towards each other. And then inhale, slide the shoulder blades back till you feel as though they're flat against the floor. And again, exhaling, the ribs come down and your arms pull the scapula away from each other and the inhale you feel as though the shoulder blades find each other and the weights help you do that three more exhaling away we go with shoulder blades separating out across the back of the ribs and inhaling they pull back again your rib cage placement has to fundamentally be part of this so the breath out is the floating up and the breath in the returning down exhale the rib cage down and float your arms up, inhale, and retrieve your shoulder blades towards each other, keeping your ribcage placement. We have one more. And up they go, sliding across the back of the ribs, and down they come. Now bend your arms, so my upper arms are by the sides of my ribcage. On the breath out, I'm going to pelvic tilt, so I'm no longer in neutral. I'll breathe in and roll back to neutral. Exhaling, no bum cheek squeeze now, just pelvic tilt, using pelvic floor and the internal oblique thinking inside the hip bones and then inhaling, floating back again. Now, as you pelvic tilt, let your arms straighten and as you go back to neutral, allow your arms to bend and keep your shoulders away from your neck. You've got four more. Breath out to pelvic tilt and extend your arms and inhaling to bend at the elbow and return back to neutral. Remember, if your pelvic floor doesn't get involved in your pelvic tilt, you're simply doing a bum tuck. You're not doing anything that's to do with anything in relationship to Pilates. You've got to find your pelvic floor to mobilize and the internal oblique. Okay, you have one more. Exhaling, the arms reach and straighten, shoulders are stable, and inhaling back to neutral. From that position there, then you're gonna breathe to nod the chin, and then exhale, curl up, reach your arms forwards, look at both knee joints, make sure they're level, inhaling, bend at your elbows, and come back down, staying in neutral. Breath out to nod and roll, my arms reach, both weights are level, hands are level, and I reverse back down. It's all rib cage placement ribs, chin nod, nose points to pubis, inhaling, rib cage as my thoracic rolls down. Last two. And last one. Nod the chin, reach your arms, and reverse back down. From that position there, we're going straight into hip roll. So now we do the breath out to pelvic tilt, roll, and as you roll, Flow your arms up in the air. Keep your arms here now, breathe in, and as you breathe out, allow your arms to open as you bring your rib cage down and you're back into your neutral. Inhale at the base. Arms are reaching but not on the floor. Exhaling as you roll through the hips. Close your arms, keeping them chest width apart, keeping the shoulders away from the neck. Inhale and stay, exhaling and the spine goes down. Again, don't um, overly grip your pelvic area. It's the pelvic floor, the internal oblique, and then the hamstrings. So 
to the back of the thigh feels it you breathe in just here and mobilizing down without twisting or um, kind of uh, making a tilt that's inappropriate exhale keeping alignment is what i wanted to say and i couldn't quite get the words so you're keeping the alignment from left to right from pubis to navel from heels to hamstrings sitting bones and when you come down this time stay and bring your arms back to bent elbows exhale now and pull your left leg up into tabletop you curl on the breath out and uncurl stay in either a very light lumbar imprint keep your upper arms by the sides of your ribs the leg in tabletop wants to stay absolutely securely there as you bend and straighten your arms the breathing straightening and rolling up staying in relative neutral inhaling back down nothing in the back working next time you come back down stay place the right leg down place the left leg up you're in tabletop you are in neutral breathe out and roll the spine and breathe in and come back down resist any unwanted shifting of the pelvic area as you curl and uncurl and rolling pelvic stabilization pelvic floor obliques working the front of the shoulder may well start to feel the fact it's being asked to stay open and next time you curl up stay exhale and pelvic imprint the lumbar spine and bring your other leg up both feet together toes above the knees look down at the pelvis now inhaling open your arms and roll down your arms have just gone sideways outwards exhaling pull the thighs together as you pull your arms in inhaling laying down slowly keeping the collarbones wide breathing and up you come inhaling it's a halfway open phase you'll feel the front of the deltoid that's the front of the shoulder area not pinching activated if it's pinching you've rounded your shoulder and you're not going from your armpits the next time you curl up you're going to stay up so curl up and stay bring both um, weights to your right knee and just point them out sideways and stretch out the left leg so now inhale i've got one leg straight one leg bent elbow slightly bent breath out i'm going to curl towards that bent knee inhaling i'm coming down out i'll look at my weights as i curl to the outside of the shin and knee now as you curl reach your arms away from each other but pull them back as you come back down i keep looking my arms part as though one goes down one side of the knee and inhaling back now the chin keep looking at the weights reach your arm and you've just got two more the other thing that was told me I apparently do too many reps <laughs> so having taken them on board that feedback I'm doing fewer reps exhaling and inhale back bring both legs in then send this time your right leg out take it to wherever you want but you've got to keep it strong and stable have the weights pointing just to at the side of the knee exhale curl and inhale and back so you start off with a relatively close connection the left legs in tabletop you nod and then you start reaching your arms inhaling down and exhale up look for the weights coming together and look for the arms reaching away from each other keep everything absolutely level and inhaling back down and exhaling reach rolling so this is a gentle slow motion connection to everything oblique and pelvic stability you're a gentle neutral you have one more the elbows bend the elbows extend now pull both legs in keeping your legs in tabletop open your arms out so they're not on the floor breath out as you curl up send your legs straight make sure both arms are level with each other inhale and bend and open the arms out palms are to the ceiling breath out curl look at your pubis inhale and open out if you were on the reformer 
The tension on the ropes with the pulleys and the springs would help you notice that both arms moving simultaneously with equal load. With weight, you have to calibrate that load, which basically means your um, muscle control has to be more accurate and therefore more relevant to real life. But we use the reformer because we need it. Breathing out, we roll and breathing in, returning down, mesmerized by symmetry. Last time, can you see how open my shoulders are? And then the next time you come down, stay. Plant your heels on the floor again, but put your right leg in tabletop. Right leg in tabletop, arms are reaching. Exhale then, and you've got your single leg rolls up. Arms open without collapsing, and single spine leg roll down. Breath out, press through the heel. Open your arms, have a breath in. Breathe out and feel the ribcage part of the spine lowering down. Let's see if what happens if you just take one arm out sideways, the arm goes out sideways of the leg that's bent up in the air, and the arm comes back in again. And breath out. The arm that's staying still is staying sat within the shoulder um, accurately in terms of it's not collapsed, it's not wandered out sideways, there's stability going on. This is your last one with your left leg, and right arm out right on back in and down you go take your time make sure everything is level bring your other leg up in the air arms at this point shoulders are stable start with your first roll up so breath out and roll let both arms open out breathing and down inhale exhaling arms reach breathe in arms and rib cage spine come down now we'll try the left arm going out it's a different need and what's happening here is the body's resisting twist so all of the stability system that's involved in keeping you from inappropriately twisting is now being challenged because of an asymmetrical movement pattern exhale open slow 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 inhale to know that you're there Exhaling and down, 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 down. Pelvic floor, navel to spine. Don't overlift. Just go to the place where you know your hamstrings fully activated and your obliques and the right, sorry, the left shoulder area in terms of maybe across the pecs. Do not forget the famous pelvic floor. It's very easy to fail to activate and go for a much more surface appearance. When your arm comes back this next time and your spine rolls down, let that go. From this position now, we've got a final abdominal workout. Elbows are by your sides, find yourself into imprint. Breath out, curl up, you're in imprint. Turn the palms to face the ceiling and pick both legs up. And bend at your elbows, exhale, Straighten your arms and tap your toes down. Inhale, bend your elbows. Exhale, imprinting. And elbows bend, palms face, face, palms face, ceiling as legs tap down. And reach the arms. There's not any part of you that isn't trying to create length. If taking the feet to the floor doesn't work for you, then simply push them away a bit. The lowering and the reaching of your arm and bicep should help the whole bent elbow position that we're all working in with mice, as in technical. Last two. Last one. That straight arm moment is crucial to the bicep. Pull the knees into the chest, rock around a tad, and you're up to seated. Straight into hands and knees now. Um, you just need one weight ready for this. In all fours, I'm gonna put you through your cat stretch to make sure that we're mobilizing the spine appropriately. So you're on hands and knees, big breath in, breath out, pelvic tilt, 
rounding the spine. Inhale just there and breathing out again all the way into extension. Pull the collarbones wide open, crown of the head to the ceiling. Don't forget, it's pelvic floor. You find your oblique roll, find the cat, breathing in and breathing out, opposite way round, tailbone, collarbones and extending through the spine, just like that. Next time you find yourself back into neutral, stay. Take the weight in your, oh, actually I'll do the hand there so that you can see. So take your weight into your left hand and then take your right leg out so that it's just touching in the positions that we've been doing this week. This hand now is going to reach backwards. So already I've got my left arm reaching out, my collarbones are open and my right big toe hovering the floor. Breathe deeply through the core area and then exhale, let that leg, let the leg lift an inch, inhale lower, exhale up an inch, inhale down an inch. As your arm lifts past the bottom, the palm of the hand and the weight faces the side of the thigh, you'll pull up against the seat muscles on both sides of the body, you push the ground away with you in your mind from, so the floor pushes away. The crown of the head is reaching and lift. If you can keep your leg reaching, do, but now bend your elbow. So now the tricep, I bend my elbow, the weight touches the side of my bottom and then I extend my arm. Bend my elbow and extend. It's called tricep kickback. Now if you need to rest the big toe, on the floor of that leg um, that's stretching away. If that allows you to take more attention to the back of the upper arm. So you've got shoulder stabilization with tricep push back. So I push it back and away. The back of the upper arm muscle starts to activate. Just one more. And I bring that arm down, bring the leg in and roll the weight over to the other side. Remember, you can do all this without weights. So in this position here, sending out the left leg this time. Um, everything in the body should be activating just because of everything we're doing. Take your arm right back so it's a straight arm, collarbones wide open, hands reaching. The leg can lift as your arm lifts and lower. Remember, whenever the lift happens, you're not kicking your leg up and neither are you kicking your arm back. You're reaching the leg and the arm out of the shoulder and your core connecting. So the challenge is on the pelvis to stabilize. Your lats and serrats armpits with the arm that's down are stabilizing and the arm that's pushing back and forth is trying to find the upper back connection. Next time the leg goes off, leave it or place it back, it doesn't matter, but bend your elbow of the weighted hand. Exhaling, extend it as though it could reach the ceiling. Inhale, pull the weight down to the hip. Exhale, extend the arm. Keep reaching. Use your breath out to try, um, cause stabilize. And two more. Last time. And return the hand and the way to position back. From that position there, just to give us um, a quick blast of the trunk stability system, have your thumbs pointing forwards, fingers spread, breath out, hover the knees, and come into your pyramid. Press your heels down, pull your shoulders away from your neck, enjoy the moment, go on breathing and out, Everything should feel level, nothing pinchy, then roll to tiptoes. You're going to breathe out to take yourself to a hovering knees. Breathe in and hold, look at your knees, breathe out and find yourself up. Create even more of an angle because you've got a closer proximity to your feet and then lower the chest down. So my heels are pushed down and my chest is springy as in my armpit area. I go onto tippy toes, pull the armpits forward, 
And then I'm going to have a little look by dropping my head and watching my knees go down. We've got one more. Exhale, pelvic floor, navel to spine. Use everything appropriately through the trunk stability system. Then pull those heels down and find your springy shoulder. Heels, calf stretch, chest and um, upper thoracic stretch. Okay, people, exhale up and out of position and pull your chest forwards and lower your knees down again. From there, we're going to the side series. So take yourself into side lying. Uh, again, I've decided to use a pad under my head. You can still put your hand there. Um, it really doesn't matter. It's partly because I'm doing too many workouts a day, so I end up feeling as I brace places that I really shouldn't. For this part of the workout, get everything so that you're into your straight line. Check down your body that your hovering shape is just literally above the floor and that the top leg, that hip, um, is activated from heel to hip. From there, your arms are reaching. We're going to build this up slowly. My legs are going to lower down till they touch, but both feet are level. And then breathing out, I'll pull my toes to my nose. As they lift, I'm going to bicep curl. And inhale, I'm going to lower down the legs and straighten your arm. Exhale, bicep curl as they lift. Inhaling, they reach and lengthen, as does my, my shoulder. And breath out, they lift. Inhaling, I reach away. Arms and legs, breathe out, pelvic floor, nervous spine. Now leave your legs here. From there, you're going to see if you can push your arm above your head. Can you see how my palm now faces my um, ear, as it were? I then pull my elbow down in the direction of my hip and open the arm. Lower my legs down again. Breathe in, point the toes. Exhale, lengthening to lift to bend, pulling the weight in the direction of the shoulder, to reach your arm without dropping it. Lift your legs more now, so you end up with um, what we call a hip hitch. Pull your elbow down, let the legs go to the long line, and then let your arms go to the long line and point the toes away. Repeat, exhale, lift, bend the elbow, you're in neutral long line side lay. Inhale to reach your arm and exhale to hitch the hip. Breathe in to pull everything back to your normal line and breathing out to reach the legs away. And long line, straight legs, pull your inner thighs together. Inhale to take your arm and palm faces down. Exhale. Use your underneath leg more than your upper leg. Big, 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 big reach. And we pull everything back to the neutral line, but hovered. And then we allow the legs and arm. Shall we do one more? Yes, let's. Exhaling. Bent elbow. Inhale, reach. Exhale. Use your underneath leg more than your top leg in your mind. Big, 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 big reach. Pull your elbow back and now stay in a hovered leg. Final challenge here, keep everything as it should be neutral. Push your arm forwards and pull it down. Exhale, pull your arm forwards without dropping to the floor and inhale, pull it back in. So both sides of the waist are working, your shoulder is working and nothing feels pinchy. You've just got two more here. As your arm goes forward, you're challenging your pelvis to stay absolutely level. Last time, use your inner thighs to keep the underneath leg connected to the upper leg. And the next time your legs and arms are together, as it were, float them down. That should have felt pleasant. Okay, people. Just turn yourself around to face the other way. Um, we're going to do, um, you only need one way to get it, I don't know why I took the other. You're going to go to thread the needle. So I put the weight into my left hand. I'm in true all fours. Breath out slowly. 
Lower down, down, down. Now stay and breathe in, holding that weight and breathing out. Slowly pull back again. Weight under the belly, stay where you are and repeat. Exhale, turn the head simultaneously with the rib cage thoracic. Go down a wee bit deeper, breathe in. Breathe out, feel the rib cage connection with the breath. Once more. The rib cage area, the belly button, the spine area, completely um, activated. It's like wringing out a dishcloth. All right, swap hands with the weights. Hold the weight under the navel like your crook, um, the babe in the crook of an arm, as it were. And then here we go. Here we go. Breath out. Feel the body rotate, look in the opposite direction. Stay for an inhale and breathing out. Cradle that weight back again. I've got a really open hand. Breath out. Turn, 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 turn. Inhale and breath out. Reverse back again. Exhaling last time. Refuse to sit back to your heels. Try and keep everything as it should be in um, pelvic level. And as you come back, let the weight go and allow the bottom to go back just in case you did anything untoward into your lower back. Breathe, breathe, breathe. You're in a cheeky shell stretch and you're ready for the other side of um, your side lying. So lying on your side, Ready with one weight, which will go into your hands. Your feet are reaching and move my water weight out of the way. So we're here. Um, never assume both sides are the same. Look down the body and here you go. So shoulder blades draw down the back, collarbones wide open, float the legs. If you're a sway back or if you're massively bendy and really long, then simply be sure that your feet are further forwards than you thought they need to be. Your hips are stacked one on top of the other and your arm, palm faces the direction that you're gonna be working as you lift up and inhale down. Exhale, bicep and inhale, lower. Exhaling, underneath leg, helps lift the upper leg and lengthening out. See so shoulder on the upper arm area, the top arm, that you're moving with the weight stays completely open and in neutral. The build up is really innocuous and inhale pointing and down. Here we go, we take it a bit further. So stabilize the legs there. Make sure you've got your waist off the floor on the side you're lying. You're gonna bend the elbow and then you're going to take your arm and reach it. Pull your elbow back in the direction of your hip and then open the arm and lower the legs. So this is level one. Stay heavy with the head. You're going to lift. Bending the elbow is what you've done. Find your shoulder stabilizers if it's pinchy anywhere, don't go, it's very interesting. So this arm, I've got major issues with my shoulder and I can feel it quivering, but not pain in my reach. Whereas the other arm could hardly feel anything. Core connect, up. Here we add the increase. So now inhale and reach your arm to wherever it will go. Exhale, lift. Inhale, pull your armpits, to pull your elbow towards your hip and to lower the legs down to a hover. Exhaling, bend. Inhale, reach. Exhale, up. Inhale, find your lats. That's the back of the armpit to pull the elbow back appropriately and to lower those legs down. Inhaling, it's pelvic floor, navel to spine. As your elbow bends, rib cage, navel spine, as your arm extends. You have no idea the quivering that's going on. 
lift, and nearly forgot to do my lift as that involved in the quiver, and pull the elbow back, and that shows um, how none of us, it doesn't matter who you are, you don't have symmetry. Um, and it only takes to have a slight niggle, I'm bending my elbow, my legs have reached, I'm extending and double lifting. I'm driving through the pelvic floor, the navel, the spine, the obliques. Let's go one more here. Bend, core, rib, pelvis, reaching and hip hitching. Breathe, refuse to roll backwards, pull your elbow in, lower the legs down to a hover. And now time for your legs are reaching together, glue the inner thighs tight as you float your arm forwards and pull it backwards. Breath out, reach the legs away and keep the distance. So don't allow the weight of the, um, well the weight, to pull your arm down. You want to keep the palm facing the floor and then facing the side of the pelvis. Your inner thighs are drawing tight together and if you're really fancy, you'd probably do flex and extend at the ankles. Flexing as you reach and extending. I'm not allowing my arms to go higher than the um, height of my shoulder. Pull my toes to my nose, push my toes away. Last time, inner thighs, tight together, you'll work them and away. And actually, allow that to go. That should have been slow but deadly, okay? Gonna finish off in the dark position, which is actually really intense um, using the weights. You're gonna lie on your front as you've learned to do. Again, I'm putting a block under my head, so I've got less um, continuous work on some of my stability system. Take your weight and take both hands holding it. You can try this, you, know, you put one weight in each hand, you'll soon get rid of them. So here, your legs have reached, your arms are just going to lift and lower, and that's really intense on the upper back. As your weights push upwards, feel for the shoulder blades. Between the shoulder blades, they should get a connection as those skin folds are increasing. Just do two more. Now, if you're doing pelvic floor, navel to spine, legs reaching, you'll be red hot now. So I'm going to get rid of one of the weights and keep um, one of the weights in one hand. This time, squeeze my thighs together. And as I lift, I'm going to push that weight down the side of my trunk and come back. My weight is off the floor my weighted arm, a side bend and slide back. Exhale, legs tight, side bend, armpit, shoulders and back. Exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, inhaling. It's really intense if you're doing it. Okay, switch sides. Same principle. Breath out, my legs are tight. And you'll see my other side. So one side slides away. Inner thighs pull together. This is really tough. Keep those inner thighs. Make sure it's only the armpit that slightly moves. Last time. You know what? Take yourself into a shell stretch. Um, the intensity in that movement there um, tells me an awful lot about what we need to do. I couldn't have thought that was as intense as it is. Everyone, if you're doing that properly, there was no way that was easy. Um, so we'll make it here to stay. To finish off, um, take yourself into your plank position. 
and hold your plank position, shoulders away from the neck, and then pull the knees down and push forwards. So you feel everything there working. We've done an awful lot of upper body and trunk stability because it was upper body. My heels stay high. For me, this is like a flushing out, making sure there's not just one part of me thinking that it took all the attention. So there's belly button, spine. Last one. Lower the knees down. Leave your hands where they are to give the armpits a stretch. Shoulder blades draw um, upwards in this position, but you connect through your armpits. Everyone, big breath out. Tuck your bottom under and roll yourself all the way back up. Okay, so that was um, a deeply intense workout going on with every stability system in the upper back particularly. Hopefully, um, you'll give me some feedback about how it felt. Um, so here endeth that moment. It was about a 30 minute intense moment as far as I'm concerned. So it's lovely to see you. Hello, Angela. Hello, Helen. Um, let us know how you felt about that as a workout. I would suspect it was intense, um, but I'd like to know. Anyway, lots of love to you all. Have a great day. It's a sunny day and I will see you in other sessions, particularly Zoom.